So this is my review of Calculus Early Transcendentals by James Stewart, and this is going to be the 5th edition. Now, nowadays there are the 8th and 9th editions of this book, but this review basically applies to any edition of this book. Now, there's two versions here. There's the Early Transcendental version, and there's also the regular one. I believe the regular one has a red color to it, and then the Early Transcendentals is obviously this blue coloring. And the only difference is Early Transcendentals introduces transcendental functions just earlier in the book. And so it really doesn't matter which version of the book you get. Now one thing to note here is that the newer versions, like the 8th and 9th edition, on Amazon can cost upwards of like $200, which is quite expensive. So there isn't really much of a difference between the newer versions and older versions like these. Like just slight differences maybe in practice problems or exercises. But in general, the lecture content is basically the same. So if you want to save money, I would definitely recommend trying to get something along these lines. Now this book is intended for students to learn Calculus 1, Calculus 2, and also Calculus 3 at the university or college level. So looking at the table of contents here, we start off with functions and models, followed by limits and derivatives, differentiation rules, applications of differentiation, then we go to integrals, and then applications of integration. Now chapters 1 through 6 from function of the models to application of integration, this is going to be your Calculus 1 class. That's the contents of Calculus 1. So then Calculus 2 starts off with Chapter 7, Techniques of Integration, Further Applications, and then Differential Equations, followed by Parametric Equations and Polar Coordinates, and then Infinite Sequences and Series. So that's going to be the contents of Calculus 2. And then Calculus 3 starts off with Vectors, Vector Functions, Partial Derivatives, multiple integrals, and then finishes off with a vector calculus, which is the main or the bulk of the section of calculus 3. So this chapters uh, 12 through 16, that's going to be the contents of calculus 3. And then there's an extra section here, chapter 17, for second order differential equations, but that isn't really taught in a standard calculus class. So that's more for like a differential equations, a separate course on differential equations. So if you're just reading this book for the purpose of calculus, uh, you can feel free to skip this part. And then we finally finish off with the appendix and the index. Now the structure of the book, or each the structure of each section in the book is fairly straightforward. So for example, let's look at section 2.7 here. Um, you have the standard lecture, so that includes the lecture notes and also some good examples, definitions, and theorems. And then at the end of each section, you have a set of practice problems. And there's quite a bit. So in this section, there's about there's 28, yep, 28 practice problems just in this section. And then towards the end of the book, you have the corresponding answers to all of the odd-numbered exercises. So overall, this book is very easy to read and understand. And its sections are very organized. And you can easily navigate from section to section. So I would recommend this book to anyone who is currently taking Calculus 1, 2, or 3 and wants a or wants to treat this book as a supplement to their class or to anyone who will take calculus 1 2 or 3 in the future and they want to study ahead or self study for the class and in the end this is a great comprehensive book for university or college level calculus now that's pretty much it if you have any questions or comments about this book or if you want to recommend a, another calculus book that you have read or want to read feel free to comment down below I hope you found this review helpful and thank you for watching.